Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm going to be carrying on doing a bit of rearranging and everything. Um, this time outside of the polytunnel. And we've been moving some plants out into the yard. Um, I did a video previously bringing out the, a lot of the sort of hanging baskets out here that we had inside the polytunnel. They were normally hanging off the, the rails here. These are all outside now for the spring and summer where they can get plenty of rain, sunshine and fresh air. And some of the, some of the other ones as well we've got underneath here. We've moved these under the under the little stone table here because they get plenty of a bit more shade under there but plenty of light and protected a little bit from excess rain and lots lots in bud as you see as my ripsalidopsis um commonly known as the easter cactus they packed with buds and what we're doing today in this video is we're going to be moving a lot of the plants that we've had the big tall serious cacti that we've been overwintering inside of the house put these now back into the yard for the spring and summer months and um we actually put these two out last night. This is the big, tall um, Pylocerius here, very tall cactus, uh, probably about eight feet high. And this is our very tall Brasilia Apuntia, Brasilia, Brasiliensis. And it is very tall, as you can see. And it was actually touching the top of the ceiling in our house. So it's come out just at the right time. Not quite sure what we're gonna do when we have to overwinter this one. I don't really want to cut it back, but if we have to, we'll have to. And then treat the top part as a cutting. But we'll see, see how we go and what the circumstances are here. But these two are out already. Put a couple of big heavy sort of bricks on there to stop them well i don't think this one's going to blow away it's in a heavy enough pot but just to keep it secure and got some of the agaves out that i did the other day but um we're going to be putting there some of the other serious cacti that we have in the kitchen which i'm going to show you in a minute outside and we overwinter them in indoors because we as you see show you we have a lot of tall serious cacti in our polytunnel but these are hardy plants like trichocerius and um, some of the other type of varieties as well that can take a minimum of five degrees celsius um, which is what our polytunnel heater comes on at if it in the winter time to stop them from being any any colder than that but obviously pylocerius and other type of serious plants we've got indoors need a minimum of about 10 degrees celsius so this is why we overwinter them indoors now it's spring and the, the chance of frost has gone away we've got to get these out into the yard so that's the first two here this is a brasilia puncher um, which is you know an unusual uh, type of type of cactus as you can see there it's almost leafy in how it forms it's, it's really lovely and I've had this for many many years I got this from my friend John who had it for about 25 30 years himself and it's grown into a really a tree it really has absolutely beautiful so this would be probably about 50 years old anyway but amazing and very tall pylocerius they're twin twin pylocerius this I got from from a guy in Dublin who was selling this plant because he was moving house and he didn't have anywhere to put it. Uh, and I actually bought it off him and said, look, if ever you want to have it back and you find you move somewhere, you're able to take care of it, you can have it back. But um, I never heard from him since there. But as you can see, very big, tall plant. He got it apparently when it was a little tiny plant from a garden centre many, many years ago. And uh, humongous. And this is all our other ones in the yard. And I'm also going to be bringing down, we've got a, I've got a hanging basket upstairs in my office that I overwinter some of the Hylocerius cacti, commonly known as the dragon fruit. Some more Ripsalis cacti, the ones that sort of scar be easy um, in cooler temperatures. So that's why I kept them indoors um, rather than outdoors. Got some Ripsalis here that um, I overwinter in the polyton. They're a bit more hardier. So I'm going to be bringing them down. I've also got some chlorophytums, the spider plants. They're also on the hanging basket upstairs. They're going to be coming out. Not quite sure where to put the hanging basket. think it's going to go here. Excuse this big sandbag. <laughs> That's what we've been using to big soil. Um, big um, sand, I should say. That's what we use to put the sandbags in. It's not the most attractive. We're going to have a bit of a tidy up here, I think. And I think we're going to be putting the hanging basket stand here and put the hanging baskets from upstairs on. These are other hanging baskets, hooks that we've just got on the fence. Lovely, I mean, look at the abundance of buds on that, guys. This is my Epiphyllum Pegasus, and never has it had so many buds, so I'm very, very excited about that. They're loving the fresh air out here, and as I say, this time of year, they can take plenty of rain without any problems, as long as they're sort of protected from um, harsh sunshine and harsh, harsh winds, but we never really get harsh 
harsh sunshine in Ireland. You're lucky to get a, a sunny day in general. <laughs> so I don't think I have to really worry about that. But um, that's a little bit of an update on everything here. I put the punches out the other day into the yard. And as I say, I'm just sort of bringing things out and just putting them here at the moment because there's other plants that are going to be coming in and out of the polytunnel over the next week or two. So it's easier just to get everything out so it's got fresh air and sunshine and then rearrange everything once it's already out. And as I say, these are the, the, some of the tall ones. We're going to be put the rest of the tall ones from the kitchen outside. And then the hanging basket stand upstairs is going to be coming down. Now these are the, uh, the tall plants we have in our kitchen and we overwinter them in here. Not the most ideal place because our kitchen is where we sort of live and serve food but really there's really nowhere else we can overwinter them. <laughs> they do okay I mean they overwintered fantastic. It's very bright in this room close to the window as you can see south facing window light comes across plus we do have additional grow lights we sometimes push into onto these plants as well but they're Overwintered, fantastic and um, they're just starting to come into new growth as well as you can see there and it's important these do go outside into the into the yard for the spring and summer so they can they don't grow stretched out or retaliated because although they get sunshine here and they're close to a window when they're actively growing they're that little bit too far away from a window cacti um, especially the desert types need um, full spectrum sun um, all through their growing period. So if we, if we were to keep these in the house permanently in this position, they would grow stretched out. Fine for overwintering them, but no good for um, when they're actively growing. So this is why we bring them out for the spring and summer. So a few people say, why don't you just leave them there? They look cool in your kitchen. <laughs> and that's because they need to have um, the bright light to fully grow. And um, that's, that's where we are with these. It's gonna be great to get these out of the kitchen, have a bit more space in here and uh, this is why we overwinter these ones in the kitchen is because these are mostly pilocesarius, um, these ones, and they do need a minimum of um, 10 degrees Celsius in the winter time. So that's why we keep these indoors. These are different ones again, but again, this is a Stenocerus uh, turburi, commonly known as the organ pipe cactus. Um, can take pretty cold temperatures, but ideally not. So this one, again, we like to overwinter in here. It lost its roots last year, as you can see. And I think it was because it was kept a little bit too, too cold at five Celsius for this plant's liking. And um, that's that there. I'm going to show you the hanging basket stand upstairs that we're going to be bringing down. Now this is the hanging basket stand that I have in my office here, office stroke um, plant room as you can see. And it's going to be wonderful to get this out because it is a huge plant stand. And I only have a small little office, it's a small room. And as you can see it's covered with plants already. So it's going to be great to have some extra, extra space there. And it's a very sturdy plant stand. This is one I got, I think it was Amazon or eBay, I can't remember. But it's, it's brilliant, I mean we had some very windy um, days last year in the summer and this was great never even moved and it's going to be great to bring out now this is another more ripsalis ones that are not the coldest hardy um, compared to the other ripsalis which is why we kept these indoors this year this is my ripsalis um, paradox are commonly known as the mistletoe cactus because of how it looks and this tends to mark and and uh mark quite badly and drop its stems in cool temperatures so that's why i kept this indoors as i say Pretty good there, close to the window. They, they prefer a bit more shade, especially when it's overwintering, no problem at all. They've done well. Another little Ripsalis here as well. So they're all gonna be going out. Hylocerius, these. <coughs> I've got a few different types. That's one there that um, I've, I've had for a long time. I bought, I bought a seedlings. And this one here, actually this one, no, actually, apologies. This was actually what um, my friend Sharon actually actually grew herself from seed from a fruit and um, that is doing very very well this is the one that I bought my I bought a seedlings they look very similar and that's doing very well and this is one I actually grew myself from seed as you can see there that's going to need to be repotted because not ideal the pot the hanging basket it's in there that's going to need a bigger uh, basket so I'm going to be doing that probably in the next week or two and I'm not actually going to be keeping these they will go out into the yard on this hanging baskets hand, uh, holder, but temporarily I'm going to actually put them into the polytunnel because they 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 don't, they can take plenty of rain. But I did give them a very good water the other day. I put them into the shower, and I really think that they don't need any more rain at this moment. I'd rather them just dry out a little bit. So they're going to be going into the polytunnel on the rack and then brought out probably in another another couple of weeks. And these are all chlorophytums here. 
quite a few different types and these can take plenty of rain so no problem there all these babies are going to be potting up and giving away um, to friends and also charity shops as well because they're always they're always a great great gift to give to people and that's it I just want to show you this totally off topic to what I'm talking about but this is my Slumbergera truncata very old one and it is reblooming again at this time of year lovely to see look at them blooms guys absolutely gorgeous and it's packed with flower buds yes i'm going to be pollinating these flowers again too and um packed with um seed pods i should say there look all full of seed that i pollinated these flowers myself very exciting and this here is sort of up my grow room as you can see it's a little bit over on seedlings there i'm going to be putting a lot of plants that are on this table into the polytunnel to um for the spring and summer probably again over the next few days i'm going to be keeping some of the seedlings in here because they do very well under these grow lights and they get plenty of sun this time of year as well coming through um but i'm going to be making a lot more space probably putting some of these into the polytunnel and i'm having a bit of a rearrangement on here too so it's going to be great great to have the office back <laughs> and that's that so um I'm trying to work out whether to move the... Hans is going to help me, by the way. He's, he's going to help me with his plant stand and obviously the plants downstairs to put out. So I think I'm going to start with this plant stand first and I'm going to take that down into the yard. Oh, guys, guess what bloody happened? I'm so flipping clumsy now. Um, luckily, it's nothing that can't be repaired. I just got this... Got first taking the high-low series out. Um... I'm going to be moving it into the yard and I dropped it like a clumsy idiot that I am. Um, I haven't even picked it up to have a look at it yet, but I do know that, you know, Hyla Service is completely, um, completely propagatable. I'm just a bit annoyed at myself why this has happened. Um, anyway, I'll show you what it looks like when I've picked it up. Now that's the hanging basket outside Hans's, uh, brought the hanging basket down and brought all the hanging baskets. Now just temporarily put this, the high low series that fell out of his pot. This one is actually pretty much okay. Um, doesn't seem to be, this is the only bit we can actually find that's a little bit loose, that's been damaged. But that can be, what we're going to do is, is prune this here and then treat this top part as a cutting. It's going to be a lovely healthy cutting actually. Um, it needed a bit of a pruning anyway, so it's no big deal. It doesn't seem to be any real damage. That was already done from last year there. Um, so far, so good. I'm going to have to completely re repot this plant anyway because it's, I don't like the soil that it's in particularly. And this ba hanging basket here isn't really that practical um, for it. So, you know, it's going to need to be potted anyway. But leaving it here for now, and I'm going to prune that back. And... Um, that's pretty much okay with everything else here. That's it so far. And then i um, going to bring the rest of them down. Now, guys, that's the plant stand from upstairs all brought down here. And it looks pretty good, I have to say. And as I say, I'm going to be having another look at this, giving this a bit of a pruning. And um, pretty much good. Look at that. I've got all the chlorophytums here. They're looking amazing outside. And um, as, as they can definitely take plenty of rain. And also give a little bit of shade to some of the ones underneath as well, which is great. And um, oh, the little Ripsalis is there. And the Ripsalis <coughs> Paradoxa here. And our other Hylocereus. And we've got what we've done, move the chlorophytum onto this hanging basket stand here. With all the babies <coughs> trailing down. And it means that the lovely big Epiphyllum Pegasus has got more room there when it opens its flowers. Because against the fence, the flowers on this Pegasus Epiphyllum are huge. They're like saucers, the size of them. And they'll be pressed against the fence, so that's actually better for this plant too. And there you go. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, my plan was actually to include the hanging basket um, stand um, video and also moving all the serious outside into into the yard but because time's getting on a little bit and i don't want this video to go on too long i'm going to stop this video now that's the hanging baskets all outside and i've done a little bit of a yard update on what's what's happening here and then i'm going to what i'm going to do tomorrow uh, tomorrow's video i will do the serious cacti tomorrow which are um these ones are probably going to be staying there, maybe some of them coming out into the yard. But all the ones that I showed you earlier in the kitchen, they're going to be going outside into the yard, probably in that corner there. We take Hansi's bike away and use that there to put the tall ones. But I'm going to finish this video here with just the hanging baskets because I don't want it to be too long. But I have to say, a lovely forest of hanging baskets. These actually look really lovely here. <laughs> and a great hanging basket holder as well. Very sturdy, doesn't blow over. 
very happy with it. Had it last year and um, it's really sturdy. And that's it. I'm going to be giving everything a good of a tidy up in the yard in the coming weeks. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your support and um, your amazing comments. I can't thank you enough. Look at all this Blasfeldiana, Cal and Coe, absolutely packed, packed with buds there. And what I do when I've got everything sort of a bit more ship shape, I'll do a complete um, video tour of how everything is looking um, for the spring now. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. And I want to send you, oh, if you want to know more about how to grow cacti and succulent plants without dropping them, please do go over and check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And guys, I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, till tomorrow's video, bye.